at SU, we focus on eight different technology areas. These are neuroscience, biotech, robotics, energy, computing, AI, medicine, and nanotechnology. So these are all areas that have crossed over to become information technologies and are growing exponentially. And again, we believe that these are going to be some of the most disruptive drivers of change. So at SU, we don't focus just on taking you deep into any one particular area. It's this sense of looking at disparate areas that all come together to create change. You know, it's this notion of two or three technologies coming together in an unexpected way that really create breakthroughs. And we call that convergence. It's an important theme. You're going to hear it also kind of multiple times throughout the next three days. So in my opening, I mentioned some of the amazing things that are happening in the world and alluded to some of the forces that were driving them. Uh, some of them seem, I think, pretty extraordinary and, and surprising still. And I think part of you know, a key question to ask is, why does it seem surprising? You know, why are these things catching us off guard? And I think to understand that, you really need to understand this notion of exponential growth versus linear growth. And Ray's Law of Accelerating Returns, which I mentioned, is really the foundation of our curriculum at SU. And it's become the basis for what we call exponential thinking. So what does exponential growth mean? It really just means something growing in a kind of set way over a repetitive period of time. So you might imagine something doubling every second, kind of 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, or it could be tripling, 1, 3, 9, 27. That's really all it means, and we'll take you into some more examples, but, but that's the basic, basics. Um, the issue, though, is that exponential thinking really doesn't come naturally to us, and it's not the way our brains were fundamentally designed to think. So our brains went through their major evolution hundreds of thousands of years ago, right? The world looked very, very different back then. It was really about surviving and thriving in a period that, that was basically very slow moving, didn't have significant change, and really was much more of, about linear. So it's a world that appeared to develop slowly, and people really focused almost primarily on your you know, most immediate physical surroundings, right? You didn't really have a sense of what was across the sea or what was across in, you know, 100 miles away, potentially. So it's counterintuitive, though, but because our brains are designed the way they are and went through that evolution uh, hundreds of thousands of years ago, you know, we, we think slowly and linearly. But the world today is changing very quickly and exponentially. And it's really things are happening globally. So something happens on the other side of the world, you know, we might hear about it in minutes, sometimes maybe seconds. Computers now hear about it in milliseconds. Um, and so I want to take you through a few examples of, of exponential growth that hopefully kind of frame, uh, frame it up a little bit for you. So I want you here to imagine a room that can hold up to a billion gallons of water, and the amount of water is growing exponentially. So you look every minute, the amount is doubling. And what's really interesting about looking at this chart, it's almost like nothing is happening in the first kind of 25 minutes of this room or 25 steps. And then all of a sudden, there's this crazy curve, right? And that's what's so deceptive about exponential technologies. It's really as things are growing, when you look at, uh, at the 25th step, and 97% of that room is still open. And you look at the last step, and still 50% of that room is still open. And so all the previous doublings are always less than the most recent doubling. And so when you start thinking about that, you start thinking about that curve, it's these technologies that are really in that kind of the bend in the curve that are all of a sudden starting to really surprise us and catch us off guard and are powering so many of the amazing innovations and kind of breakthroughs that we're seeing now. So this is a chart from Ray Kurzweil's book, uh, The Singularity is Near. This is his law of accelerating returns. And you see from this that exponential growth for computing goes all the way back to the electromechanical calculators that were used for the census in the 1890s and 1900s. And it shows five different paradigms of computing, and really the most recent one being Moore's. 
Uh, and what's interesting is Ray discovered that, you know, as you looked back over these hundred years, you see that the, what we call the fundamental measure of information technology, calculations per second per dollar, so also the price performance of computing, has followed a very predictable and exponential curve. And you see it's also very, very smooth, right? We know in reality, though, that technology doesn't grow that way. The world seems, you know, bumpy and technologies kind of come and go. But yet you look at this and it's, it's very smooth and up and to the right. And the reason is because this curve is made up of a series of curves, a series of S-curves that represent each technology. So as the technology begins its life, it slowly starts to kind of hit that inflection point and then kind of reaches a maximum. And uh, towards that time, you have a new technology that, that comes on. And so it's a series of these kind of nested S-curves that create this very smooth curve. And because of that, it really doesn't matter what else is going on in the world. You know, you could have feast or famine, there could be wars, peace. Those, the exponential technology continues growing exponentially kind of no matter what. It's like once you let it go, it's gonna go. So we don't know where this sixth paradigm is gonna be. What, you know, what is going to power it? Maybe quantum computing, which we'll hear about a little bit later, maybe something else. But what we can have a high degree of confidence in is that there is gonna be a sixth paradigm. And because of that, people like Ray Kurzweil are able to make some really interesting predictions about the price performance of computing and, and what the world may look like. So in 2030, Ray is predicting that we'll have a computer that will be uh, as powerful as a human mind, and you'll be able to get that for $1,000. Like, pretty extraordinary to think about. What's even crazier, though, is like as you think about 2050, his prediction is that we'll have a $1,000 computer that will be as powerful as all human minds. So like all the brain power in the entire world available to you for $1,000 in your cell phone, in your laptop, in your desktop, right? And you just start thinking about that type of computing power and what, you know, what kind of problems that might be able to solve, what the world may look like when everyone has access to that much power, that much information and technology for a very inexpensive uh, amount. So I also want to take you through a couple examples of what exponential growth looks like in real life to kind of just help anchor it a little bit. So if we look at computer storage, in 1956, you could get five meg... Sorry, next slide. Thank you. Um, you could get five megabytes of storage for $120,000. You look at 2005, 128 megabytes you could purchase for $99. And in 2017, you could get 128 gigabytes for less than $35. So this represents a 3,000 times increase in the last 11 years and a 90 million increase, I think, over the last 40 years. Great. So if you look at uh, Intel's landmark 4040 chip, so when this first came out, this had 2,300 transistors. It was an incredible breakthrough. And today, though, the most advanced silicon chips contain billions of transistors um, and represent an incredible 621 billion fold improvement over the last 46 years. So this next slide is uh, Stephen Sasson. Stephen is the founder, or the inventor, excuse me, of the digital camera. So way back in 1976, this camera that he's holding now, this is the very first one, 0.01 megapixels, cost uh, a little over $10,000 and weighed almost four pounds. So you can imagine why the directors at, uh, at Kodak weren't so excited about, about this and didn't quite understand why this potentially represented this, this really huge breakthrough. You know, fast forward now, and in 2017, you can get a 16 megapixel camera for half a gram, that weighs half a gram and costs less than $10,000. You know, it's almost five billion times better. So it's just extraordinary. These things all start to compound and result in these really, really incredible breakthroughs. So because we don't naturally think exponentially, these can be very tough times for, for business. And the data tells you that it's not easy staying successful. You know, if you had started a company back in the 1920s uh, and had been lucky enough to make it to the S&P 500, you would have had maybe a 70-year reign, right? So you make it, life is great for 70 years. 
Today, if you're lucky enough to make it to the S&P 500, you've got a 15-year window, and that's shrinking really rapidly. And we know it's not easy staying successful, right? I mean, uh, if you look at the Fortune 500, it's predicted that 10 percent, excuse me, 40 uh, percent of those folks will no longer be on the Fortune 500 in 10 years. So there's this incredible amount of kind of creation and destruction that's taking place. And so basically, you have to change or you die. So. You know, while for a lot of folks this can be incredibly stressful, right? Actually, for almost everyone, this type of change and potentially existential threats to your business, to your career, that's really scary stuff. Uh, our goal here, though, is to really try to get you excited about what's happening here and to hopefully flip the switch and think about this as an opportunity. Really, how do you thrive when all this incredible stuff is happening? As we have mentioned earlier, I mean, individuals now are empowered more than they've ever been and can do things that it used to take large companies to do. So if you decide you want to change something, you want to create a business, now you have more tools and, and the ability to do that more than you ever have. So I mentioned this notion of abundant thinking, really. And again, it's this, it's this critical lens for how we look at the world. And I think it's what you need in order to kind of flip that switch and, and look at things in a positive light. So I want to talk just a little bit more about what it means to have an abundant mindset. So the underlying principle here is that technology is the force which takes something that is scarce and makes it abundant. So we have a framework for understanding exponential technology, and Peter Diamandis is the one who's created it. We call it the six Ds. He'll talk about it a little bit later on this afternoon as well. But basically, it's a set of these six steps that we see over and over and over again. It starts off initially when something becomes an information technology, so it becomes digitized. In these early days, it's deceptive, right? You're not um, particularly overwhelmed with what it's doing, with its contribution, doesn't really feel like a threat to you. And then all of a sudden, something changes, right? And it starts to seem disruptive. You are caught off guard. There's things that are starting to happen, new products, new services that you hadn't previously seen before. Then we start to see things dematerialize. So, you know, what used to take a giant room may shrink down over time. It might be a computer or it might disappear into the cloud completely. We see things start to demonetize. So things that were incredibly expensive might be you know, almost free. They might be free. They might get bundled into, you know, into a device. You think about cell phones and you know, all the different businesses, products, and services that that represented way back when that now come for free or, or for very little money as part of that product. So this is the path that information technology advancement takes, and it leads to things becoming cheaper, uh, faster, smaller, and ultimately, as it's democratized, it becomes ubiquitous. So everywhere, available for everyone. And we're seeing that over and over and over again with more and more technologies. So what's really exciting is this abundance, these, this technological change is really having a positive impact on the world. And, you know, these are crazy times. There's a lot in the news that would lead you to believe that, uh, that this is actually a pretty scary and stressful and not so great time to be alive. But the data actually says something very differently. It's actually the best, safest time to be alive as a human. You look at the waning of war and things have dropped dramatically. Worldwide life expectancy continues to grow. We see little blips here and there, but it's definitely going in the right direction and, and making some really significant strides, especially in developing parts of the world. Automobile and airline uh, fatalities have plummeted significantly. And you can imagine with something like autonomous vehicles coming online over the coming years, you know, that's, there's over a million people who are killed every year due to traffic-related deaths and all the injuries that happen as a result. So those are things, those are lives that are going to be saved in the coming decades. And billions of people are coming online. I mentioned this earlier, but think about three billion plus people, right, getting access to the internet for the same, for the first time and being able to, to share their insights, to be able to learn from others, to be able to connect as a community and what that means in terms of the advancement of mankind, really. So super, super exciting. 
So that's kind of the quick overview here. The goal you know, really was to help kind of set the stage for these next speakers, hopefully teach you a little bit about exponentials, what exponential growth means, raise law of accelerating returns and an abundant mindset. And really, you know, as you think about your business and, and kind of listening to all the speakers over these next three days, really thinking about how critical it is to become an information technology so you can start growing exponentially.